Hey there, I am here with Jeff Chen. Jeff is the founder of MMA Shredded, which uh, Jeff is hugely popular in social media for his martial arts uh, tutorials and breakdowns, uh, training vlogs, his workouts, and he really tries to make these accessible to everybody around the world. Um, I really wish I had at least a little heavy bag so I could be following along with a lot of Jeff's workouts, but uh, I'll admit he has inspired me to be doing at least a little bit of shadow boxing here and there uh, throughout my time uh, in the shutdown. Uh, Jeff is also a professional MMA fighter, currently signed with uh, One Championships, and Jeff had his debut, his one debut last month where he won his first One Championship fight via submission. And uh, it is awesome to have you here. Welcome back to uh, welcome back to Ottawa. And thank you for uh, having me, Dr. Brian. Oh, absolute pleasure. Now, being said, having traveled to Asia, your first fight was actually uh, there was a bit of an outbreak at that point in Asia, and I mm -hmm. believe it was actually behind closed doors. There weren't uh, there wasn't an audience or a crowd watching. It, it was a closed event. Yeah. So how was that? Because even I assume in most of your uh, your fights kind of coming up to signing with one had all been pretty well attended to some extent. How is it fighting behind closed doors? Yeah. So this is actually a very common asked question leading up to the fight and after the fight. Um, I think it actually played to my advantage because obviously I'm, I was making my debut with one championship. I was really nervous, especially with the huge crowd. It's my first time fighting such a big crowd. Um, and I was also fighting a Singaporean hometown hero. So apparently he is the first Singaporeans, for, uh, sorry, the first pro MMA fighter uh, from Singapore. And apparently um, a lot of people from Singapore wanted him to win. So <laughs> no, I'm not saying that there would have been boos, but you know, since they're cheering for him, they, there might have been boos. There might have been a louder cheer for him and less for me. It could have affected my mood. I don't know, but... Um, I think it played to my advantage because I'm very used to training and sparring in front of a camera with just a few people watching. And that's how the event was. There was nobody but just cameras. So, yeah. In your uh, home territory, I guess there. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be definitely a different experience eventually when you return for your next fight, I assume, where yeah, there probably, yeah. hopefully at that point, will be uh, a crowd allowed to come see you. Hopefully. Who knows how long this will last. And then fighting out of one, how, you know, one being more of, uh, at least to my understanding, being the Asian-based uh, championship, how close are you going to be able to get to home? I don't, will you be able to fight um, in North America ever? I don't know what their plans are. I assume that they're trying to get into the uh, North American uh, audience, but as of now, I, don't, I haven't heard anything. So I guess it'll just be in Asia. Okay, yeah, because that'll uh, definitely, if it's uh, a lot of more hometown guys, put you at a bit of a disadvantage with the crowds there. But <laughs> I think it was a pretty solid showing. Like, it didn't look like you were having any trouble. So hopefully, even if the crowds had a little bit of trouble, you'll still be in pretty good form. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. And so uh, with the fight and then coming back, I know you've been in self-isolation for, I know you'd said, little over probably about 10 days at this point something like that i came back i think last wednesday what, wednesday or tuesday yeah so yeah nine or ten days at this point if the math checks out <laughs> yeah um how have you been spending that um i've been shadow boxing on my deck and i've been hitting pads with my fiance um she trains martial arts as well so i'm lucky to have a partner to hold pads for me and uh, we'll also drill back and forth uh like just technique but besides that, um, watching a lot of TV shows and just eating. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and probably nice for you too, because it's uh, certainly a time where you want to be spending a little more time recovering from everything than rather than being trying to ramp up for a fight right now. Ah, uh, you know what? To be honest, um, I, I didn't get injured for the fight. Uh, thank God, and um, I'm I'm in the mood to stay in shape. So it's a bit bothering me that I, I can only do a, like a light workout, but you know, I, I do what I can. Yeah. Well, it, I, small victories, but I know a lot of the, uh, the Instagram and YouTube communities seem to have rallied around creating as many 
different and challenging home-based workouts as they can. Yeah. So yeah. there's some, uh, some definite sort of options for your inspiration right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, within at least the, the fighting training, how have you been, I know you said you're lucky enough to have the, the fiance that's helping you. Um, and I know she's helped you with a lot of things in prep for fights and everything along the way, but how have you been adapting to the gyms being closed? Cause I know it's not perfectly ideal at this point for you. Uh, yeah, it sucks because again, I, not that my fiance is not a good training partner. She's a great training partner, but uh, it's always great to have multiple training partners. So right now my training partners is my heavy bag and my fiance and shadow boxing. So hitting the air. Um, once I'm done the 14 day quarantine, I hope to have friends come on over like one friend at a time <laughs> and train together. So that'll be, also better uh, but that's about it really um, all the gyms I know are closed down they don't want to risk the fine so well yeah and it's a crazy time where both I mean just in terms of trying to stay socially responsible and not get all the members uh, interacting and sick potentially together but also yeah the uh, there are some pretty crazy fines going out for uh, for breaking the social isolation rules right now yeah and also I'm like not I'm not obeying the law just because of the fines, but I, I'm genuinely worried about getting sick and then passing it on to my mother or any other family member. So, well, yeah, and that being the hard part is especially for uh, for people in sort of the young, younger crowd. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, chances are, you know, it looks like statistically we might not even notice we're carrying something, and then all of a sudden somebody who's more susceptible to it is in a lot of trouble if we're interacting with them. Exactly. Like right now, my, I'm, I'm, I got the house to myself with my fiance and my mother's um, at my aunt's and like, I don't feel sick and she's, I'm going to be seeing my mother soon, but it's like, I'm a bit worried that I'm actually sick, but, but I don't have any symptoms. So. Well, I mean like the, the two week quarantine period is supposed to really help with that. And then, yeah, from there, hopefully we're, we're in a better spot. Yeah. Um, now with, you know, because I think it's valid for a lot of people. There's a lot of concerns floating around just about the unknowns and be it, you know, be uh, the safety of family members or be it finances or whatever else. Um, and especially without being able to see people, it can take a really heavy mental toll on people. Um, have you been doing anything specific to keep your mind and uh, mind state up during your quarantine period? Um, you know, I'll meditate here and there, but I would say the main thing is at least getting one session in a day. And, uh, you were speaking of how many people are doing these challenges and whatnot. Um, I haven't made any challenges, but you know, I've been making, as you've mentioned earlier, uh, heavy bag workouts and shadow boxing workouts and uh, not a challenge, but you know, a workout and I'm making content and that kind of motivates me to do the workout. Um, like I don't, I wouldn't normally do all these workouts. I would normally just go to the gym, hit the bag, train, spar, and do my regular training. But because of the situation, I'm, you know, coming up with new and different workouts. I'm putting together my old workouts and kind of making the necessary changes to adapt to the current situation. Yeah, well, and that accountability can be really huge. And for you, it's accountability to you know your followers and fans. And for somebody else, it might just end up being finding an accountability buddy to making, to make sure that they're actually working out on a given day. But uh, yeah, the accountability is big. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, miss is not just the accountability, but the importance of staying active during this for you. If it is the big thing and I, you know, professionally it goes hand in hand with sort of who you are and what you do, but staying active can be really, really, really important for people. There's a lot of reallys in there, but I wanted to emphasize it um, <laughs> in terms of keeping uh, keeping their sort of mind state up. Uh, and it can be really challenging, especially depending on the severity of your quarantine. If you're somebody who's trying to not even go outside right now, there's yeah. all kinds of issues. And I mean, you know, at best you can do a lot of body weight movements and take the stairs, but it's not as motivating and frankly the weather hasn't even been that motivating to get outside lately (laughs) motivation is a big thing when it comes to training by yourself it's like you know if you if you go to class like martial arts class after a while you essentially know how the warm will go and you can probably guess what you you may or may not be working on Um, but if you're at home you probably won't go through that warm even though you know it is because you just you just get lazy and 
that's the thing about a class setting in an environment and having a coach yell at you or tell you to do it is that you will do those little simple things that are really effective, but super boring that you wouldn't do if you're on your own by yourself at home. And I find it really interesting actually, because everybody has so much time and uh, I've seen a couple tweets or memes about, you know, now is the time I should be doing all those things that I kept mm -hmm. telling myself I would do if I had time. And as it turns out, I'm actually just lazy. But I think that really applies is uh, like, it's easy to get lazy, even if you have all the time in the world and get yes. very complicit. Uh, being said, I mean, obviously, you've said that some of your motivation to keep working out uh, lately has been to make sure that you're putting your own workouts up and together for your YouTube channel, for your Instagram Creating content. Yeah. Where, if that's not necessarily a primary motivation at a given time, where do you draw that motivation from? I love eating. And this, I, like, I eat a lot, especially the, the time period after my fight, where I've been dieting for the longest time. I finally can eat and, like, you know, after eating a meal, my stomach is physically full. Like, I can't eat anymore. But up here is not full and I keep eating and there's been many times where it's probably really bad for me but like i'll finish eating and i keep eating until i get a stomach ache and i still want to eat because my taste buds just want to keep eating but anyways with that said i eat a lot and this is the first time i've like actually gained a lot of weight <laughs> and you know i got trained to stay in shape you know I, you're not the first person to go through this by any stretch mm -hmm. And actually working with the bodybuilding community a lot, it's interesting because you'll see these guys in a similar way that you had to eat really well and, and limit what you were eating and how much you were eating for mm -hmm. your training for their shows. Again, it's, it's a very similar thing. They're cutting down, they're eating very little. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as that shows out of the way, all of a sudden the, the next month of their Instagram feed is all the donuts they can handle or all the, you know, yeah. whatever else. So, you know, especially in a time like this, I think it, sort of speaks to maybe you shouldn't really be trying to to eat a hundred percent clean unless of course you're you've got some reason to yeah. i know there's a couple of people still preparing for fights or shows or mm -hmm. whatever events that haven't quite been canceled yet mm -hmm. um but you know if you're sort of an average person or if if you're somebody who is very competitive in one regard but you don't actively have a competition up potentially trying to keep yourself uh, somewhat rewarded in terms of not eating extraordinarily strict and, and making sure yeah. that you are eating something you enjoy now and then so that it's easier to not break one day and, and put on 10 pounds in the course of 24 hours eating everything. True. True. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now I'm enjoying myself. I'm eating, eating whatever I want. Which, uh, how often does that happen for you? Uh, I would say, uh, after a fight or some sort of competition, I'll eat like very unhealthy. And then I think my body gets to a point where I just don't crave it anymore. And then I go back to like my normal state of mind or whatever you want to call it. And my normal state is I don't eat too much junk food. Yeah, that's fair. So just personal curiosity after your fight, what was the thing you were most craving? What does Jeff go for? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? Burgers, pizza, fries, anything with sugar. Um, I've been lately into bakery a lot. Like I've been eating a lot of bread and this is so funny. Because, okay. So in Asia, they have like this type of snack where they put sugar and butter on uh, toast. I don't know if that's a thing in America either, but it's a, it's a big thing in Asia. And, uh, I was staying at a Airbnb where they gave free breakfast and it was unlimited like toast. And I literally ate like 10 pieces of toast with sugar and butter on it every morning for like 10 days. I had something similar as a kid actually, but there was always cinnamon mixed in with everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's I mean, similar, similar. to some extent we, we still do it in North America, or at least my family did, but, uh, I'm not what I saw you going for either, but <laughs> I, I literally would just put the toast in the toaster. Once it comes out, I would put like a thick layer of butter and just sprinkle sugar on it and just eat like 10 pieces. Oh, there we go. Well, that, yeah, perfect. And uh, so with, with those snacks and, and I know you said you're, you know, coming back to a little more normal, but still mm -hmm. sort of enjoying whatever you want to eat. 
Um, do you have any, uh, like anything you're working towards right now, any more fights lined up, anything scheduled that you can really use as a, a motivational factor? Um, they offered a fight for me in May, but that was like right after my fight. And I had to turn it down at the time because I was hosting my train and travel camp, but obviously that got canceled and that event in May probably also got canceled. So right now I'm just kind of waiting. Uh, but I am very positive that they are going to offer me another fight. So knowing that I kind of already consciously unconsciously hold back with being too unhealthy or being too out of shape. Like, you know, I enjoy training, but sometimes I like to just chill and not train for once. But, you know, up here makes me think like, I'm going to eventually have to get back in shape again. So I don't want to get too far off because the hardest thing is getting back in shape when you're really out of shape, but it's easier to just kind of coast if, and, and stay in shape. And then, and then you can peak whenever you need to yeah. just, yeah. So stay in shape. But then if you, there's a time where, I went through a really difficult situation maybe like two, three years ago and I just didn't train for like six months or longer. And I was so out of shape that like the first time back hitting pads, I felt like absolute garbage. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. You know, I don't want to get to that feeling ever again. No. And it's, it's really not a great one. I know for me and I'm terribly, I'm a cyclical runner where if the weather's nice, I'll go out and I'll run for a little bit. But as soon as it gets cold or wet, I stop. And so every spring I go through that exact, just, you know, the first run of the season is horrible. And the second run is also horrible. And, you know, by the 10th or 12th, I'm getting into some sort of a groove, but it's, I really should learn to just keep it up over the winter, pump on a treadmill or something, but I, you know, I refuse for one reason or another. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, being said, I'd be uh, I'd be shocked if you didn't end up being offered another fight because they really seem to love you. I mean, you've made a bunch of. Uh, um, I well, frankly, I didn't really know much of anything about one until I found out you were fighting in it, and then I learned about oh. it. But I think you ended up with a lot of the uh, the top five submissions of twenty uh, twenty twenty so far highlight type reels. So they yeah, really seem I to love you out there and. Uh, you know, hopefully you can be how one comes to uh, to Canada a little more when things get going. Yeah, that would be really cool to be that guy, but we, we will see. We'll see. I mean, yeah, right now it doesn't feel like much of anything is operating. I know uh, like every pro sport is, is closed down more or less outside of, I think there was some darts or some bowling on TV the other day, but mm. you know. <laughs> I'm surprised even that's open, but. Yeah, I I, uh, I can't remember what it was I was watching. It was something that I, I sort of, it was on and I didn't watch it. Hence, I can barely remember what it was. Um, and then I think the only other one I've seen is I'm pretty sure Dana White said that the uh, Khabib Ferguson fight was going to happen no matter what at this point. So we'll have but, one. But I thought I heard uh, Khabib apparently can't leave Russia or something. Oh, I missed that then. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, it looks like Tony Ferguson versus McGregor. It, I don't know right now. I mean, I really... enjoy that one too. I think, but uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but, anything Ferguson? I uh, again, somebody I didn't know a lot about until uh, probably the past year, and just have really come to enjoy watching him because he's absolutely crazy. He is a lot less technical, <laughs> I think, than you. But it feels sometimes it feels like watching like an eight-year-old who's just learned to somersault. Yes. Is it every have opportunity that man is really... <laughs> What's have that? His, have you seen his training videos? It's so funny. No, I haven't. I'll have to, he like uh, does have to take a look at back that. Back flips and front flips and kind of like lifts up the heavy bag and like rolls on top. Like he does some really funny stuff. I heard people think that he's trying to m make everyone think that that's how he's training, but he's really not training that way. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like tricking people. I don't yeah, know. who knows? I mean... Even if he's not training that way, he seems to use it a lot in the fights. So, yeah, true. Like I said, entertainment value with that guy is pretty great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, so for you, I know, just to sort of get us on some sort of a track again, um, your self isolation period is just about up. And I know you mm -hmm. said the thing you were probably most excited for was seeing family and uh, and being able to have a training partner that isn't your fiance for a change. Yeah. 
anything else you're really looking forward to just in terms of like when the world comes back to normal, what you've been missing most? Um, I, I wasn't quite finished my travels yet, so I'm probably going to head back out to Asia when it's all over. Uh, I, I want to get, you know, schedule another uh, date to host my camp because uh, yeah, we had to cancel that. And those are one of the most favorite things I love doing, meeting new people and hosting a camp and just teaching passionate martial arts. And yeah, just at being back at the gym and training. Well, that all sounds pretty reasonable too. I, uh, yeah, I imagine with the trip getting cut short, that would have been really tough. Yeah. So hopefully you can my get back out there soon enough. My life's pretty simple. Like all I need to, to stay happy is uh, my fiance, food, training. <laughs> it's a good life. Yeah. And then, uh, so to leave things off, if any tips you'd have for somebody who wanted to try to keep up training, I'm going to link to your videos and everything too. Uh, <laughs> we'll have your YouTube and your Instagram in the show notes, but uh, any tips just in terms of like training or motivation or anything you can think of? Um, I could tell people to watch my shadow boxing video, but I understand even for myself, shadow boxing can be very boring. Uh, I usually only shadow box for three rounds, three, three minute rounds just to warm up before I hit pads. Um, heavy bag, uh, go for a jog. Just, just stay healthy. Just stay healthy out of this. Just know that everyone else is going through the same thing. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people, well, I know a lot of people are staying active and you don't want to be that only guy who comes out of the quarantine or comes out of the lockdown being completely out of shape and unhealthy. You want to, you know, stay healthy just like everyone else is. I think that was really good advice too. And it yeah it ties back to it being a lot harder to uh, to get back in shape than just to maintain. So it ties it in really nicely. Thank you so much for jumping on with me, Jeff. It's great to talk to you again. No problem. Thank you for having me, and um, I can't wait to connect with you again because I loved your back cracking. <laughs> I'm glad you that, that. That's another yeah. thing I should have added to. Uh, things I'm looking forward to when this whole lockdown's over <laughs> or quarantine is your, your work. Well, I'm excited to get back to work a lot right now and uh, excited to get to, to work with you a little more. Um, yeah. I, uh, I can't wait till you get that next fight scheduled so we can try and put like a real, uh, real plan together just in terms of keeping yeah. you good. For sure. For sure. All righty. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And...